we have a 7.15 appointment. Hello, um, I'm Carrie Blood. I am with uh, Kestrel Land Trust, and I'm also a happy resident, just for the record. Um, and we're just here to follow up on our request to use the Cow Common for our seventh annual 5K for Farmland and Farmers Market Festival on October 18th, Sunday. Um, and we're looking forward to having another good event. that you need that I haven't provided in my application, please let me know. Um, I have already spoken with, I had a meeting with uh, the chief of uh, police and the chief fire chief together, and we just went over some details and they were kind of everything. And, so. and they're both <laughs> hey, Any questions from the board? No, I make a motion to uh, grant the permit for 5K for Farmland and Farmers Market Festival. I'll second. Any more discussion? The only thing that I, we ran into a little bit of a problem with the um, Asparagus Festival. It's the only thing is how do we communicate with the people down there, um, the neighbors, that their street's going to be closed off. We always send them a letter. Um, Directly to them? To them, to all of those residents ahead of time. We could do it ahead of time. Excellent. Thank so. you. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, did we talk about the wetness if it's raining? Um, yeah, so. Did you did? We, yeah, we okay. talked about that. Yeah. Okay. And, and that I'm, you know, one of the things that would happen in that case is number one, fewer people would show up, there would be fewer cars, period. Um, but I think we would also be able to park along the, um, on the pavement on the, the road that would close down on the, let's see, what's it? North. Yeah. Um, the east side, I actually wrote it down on here. On the east side of the common. And so we'll be able to have room, I think, for enough cars there. And a lot of our farmers market vendors probably won't come if it rains, so that wouldn't be an issue. So, you know, if it's really severe weather, we would cancel it altogether, which we would certainly hope doesn't happen. But you never know. Hurricanes happen. <laughs> so. Thank you. Oh, great. We're going to have a hurricane now. I yeah, just I see know. It. I just jinxed it, right? You did. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful day. I hope so. All day. Thank All right, you very much. Thank you very much. much. Okay. And good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's get back on schedule a little bit. So we have our consent agenda for tonight. Um, we have the minutes from August 12th. So moved. We, we have the warrants 10H, 10Z, 17, and 19. And we have a wage adjustment that the DPW director has brought forward. Um, anybody want to take it okay with the consent? Yeah, can we do the first two first? You want to take the third one off? Yeah, for now. Okay. So that way so there, I don't have to abstain from the whole. So no, you have to abstain. The first two. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. All those in favor? Oh, wait, is there a motion? Second. All right. So all those in favor of the first two? Aye. Aye. All, all those in favor of the, is there a motion for the third one? Uh, motion for the cheap water operators. Second. Wage adjustment. Right. The only thing I'd like to say is this is, retroactive to July 1, which is in our paperwork. So, all right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain, yeah. Okay. Michael? I have the personnel action form if the family would like to sign it for Jim's pay. I'll make it out. I'll make Thank you. Out. All right. So, we got some time to do some catching up again. So, let's go with old business number one, the MassDOT intersection planting. So, I've talked to the Historical Commission. They don't remember what they asked for. They don't think they asked for what's on the plans. Um, so, no one has come forward to really want to help support this or maintain this. It's going to be a pretty big burden, speaking from experience, um, to maintain a lot of this stuff. Um, so do we want to go back to Mass DOT and say, hey, this is really too much. Let's take this out. If, if the entity that allegedly was looking to have it done no longer feels it's necessary, then yes, I agree with you. It, it won't need, it shouldn't be done. It's too big a burden and nobody wants to take care of it and maintain it. So I think the only reason we were pushing this was to try to, to, to make some people happy. And if it's not an issue that anybody's pushing, 
let's make it as simple and as clean and neat as we can. You know, af after the construction's done, if we leave it all grass and there's a business that wants to take care of one of the corners, then I'm sure we can. Yeah, it's just that, you know, there's, it doesn't, this doesn't prevent us in the future from getting an access permit yeah. and doing it. So it's just saying we're not going to do it now and we mm -hmm. can do something in the future. We can't commit to it right now. So is that That's a no. acceptable to everyone that we'll say? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Upstate. I will. Uh, Go ahead. You Go want ahead. to do it, Mike? I've got the application for the permit from the state for what you're being spoken about, so we can just deny this permit application. I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. actually just send a, a uh, note to Mr. Massey and uh, say, after much, much thought and discussion, we careful, can't do this careful right now. consideration, balancing the pros and the cons. Okay. So Okay, so old business number two, we have a DPWS director search update. So you asked me to revise the, um, the, uh, the job announcement. I've done so, provided you a co with a copy of it. Uh, if it's acceptable, then we can, uh, we can hit the press. So moved if it was approved by the uh, committee to the director of public works. Yeah, I think the, the main change that you wanted was the uh, qual the uh, engineering uh, background and uh, change that language to allow for equivalent experience. Mm -hmm. I never saw the original, Molly. Is that is everything else the same? Yeah, I think it looked fine. I, I mean, it, I guess the question is, you know, it says um, Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering or related field preferred but not required. Or should it say, you know, or relevant experience? But I, then I think the rest of it gets to the relevant experience. So I, I'm fine with it the way it is. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got some here. The chapter 148 in 2009, when you brought this forward to the town meeting, uh, it stated when you brought this in front of the people that we were looking for a director. director not be a resident of the town. The director shall be a college graduate with an appropriate four-year engineering degree with a reasonable period of time after its appointment. The committee shall report to the board of selectmen and recommend candidates for consideration. So is changing this little vote amongst the board in line with the chapter and section of the law and the docket from the state of Massachusetts when you created the DPW. So the it's right uh, there, Jerry. I see it. Okay. So the select board are the uh, the primary hiring and firing authority under Mass General Law Chapter 150E Section 1 uh, and they have broad powers to uh, hire and fire if they wish to create a position they can so do uh, so I don't see anything inconsistent there I'd like to see that in writing or something here because it's written article 13 of the town meeting floor warrant that we voted on so are people you, voted are on. you concerned that this action is flying in the face of the Massachusetts Massachusetts general law yeah that is cited well, actually, in yes. is that the question yes is? So it's the authorization for us to have a DPW director. Right, but I didn't, does Massachusetts general law dictate the requirements for the position? Well, I requested. That's the way saying. you presented oh, oh, the it to the people on town meeting people. floor. Mm -hmm. Well, Bachelor of Science, that's a four-year program, which is mm -hmm. stated there. So that's four years. So but it says, but not required. Not required. Not required. Mm -hmm. So if you take out the... I don't think that, I, I think we should... Um, have it reviewed by our attorney. Yeah, and get clarification. And, and get clarification on that. Otherwise, I have no problem with the way that you've written it. 
So if the uh, if the, uh, the the board wants to instruct me to release the job description a uh, job announcement after uh, review and no objection from the uh, from the attorney, and should there be uh, an objection or or caveat of any kind, I'll bring it back to the board. Does that work? So moved. Second. Is that acceptable, John? Uh, I just like like to see some kind of. A, a Attorney review. An attorney review and answer to my question because that's that's the state docket. That that that's our legislative body right there that we have to act on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so it's right there in writing. All right. Yeah, so, so the motion the we have is that we'll send it to the attorney. If the attorney agrees that we need to change it, we'll change it. If he says it's okay, then we'll have a written written decision that it's okay and we'll pass that to all the board members mm -hmm. and we'll send it out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. Okay. All those in favor of the Aye. motion? Aye. 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 I will abstain. All right. Uh, uh, Gil, just professionally, can you tell us, uh, is there some other doc, uh, other uh, trade publications that should be listed there so we get the best candidates available? And we can ask Michael as well, Molly. The, I mean, the only other one you can put it in is APWA, American Public Works Association. David, do you have a... Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, wastewater has an organization too. Yeah, if you want to put in New, New, uh, yeah. New England, New England, New England. Then, then what do you got? <laughs> uh, Superintendents Association yeah. also. Mass Highway Association. Yeah. There's actually, if you wanted to put it in the base state, you probably mm -hmm. do free base state. Yep. That's becoming the, the new place for us to find out who's missing people. Huh? What was that yeah. last one? Yeah. Yeah. Base state. Basically, yeah. the actual document from the state. Yeah. All right. No, it's not. I missed that clock. I really do. Now we have to do one thing. With it. Yes. Okay. So go to Walmart and buy a four ninety nine one when we leave. He was asking me if we stole a palm or all yeah, were they better okay, shape? Right, right. left them over to public safety. So why don't we go to the results of the RFP for the IT consultant? So we have two RFPs. Uh, right, and I made a recommend, uh, gave you a, a written recommendation uh, uh, when we were preparing the uh, agenda for this meeting, and I'd like to revise that recommendation. We've received two uh, 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 results from our search for an IT consultant. Uh, the first one is from Zena, uh, uh, from uh, Greenfield, and the second one was from Northeast Systems of West Springfield. Um, both are reputable companies. Um, unfortunately, in uh, with the under the RFP process, each applicant has to submit two sealed envelopes. The first sealed envelope contains all the technical information, uh, but not the prices. And the second uh, envelope, which remains sealed, uh, is the uh, price information. We opened the non-price technical information and uh, found that Xana had not included statutorily required documents that are submitted with every RFP. And under that alone, we would disqualify Xana Company, and that was my recommendation. Um, on further thought, I'm wondering if the required documents haven't been submitted but are in that sealed price proposal. So I'm, I'm now reluctant to just disqualify a company because we don't know what's in their other document, even though the instructions were very clear not to put that information in the, the price proposal. Okay. So, um, was this town, this was town wide, David, is that correct? I beg your pardon? This was town wide? This is for the. This is for our town. Okay. Yeah. For all, I, for all someone departments. come around down there. I was wondering what they were doing. Does this have any bearing on uh, what we might be doing with the PBPC on the DLTA? Yeah. Um, yes, it's it's directly related. It's it, directly it could, related, so yeah. it could be hinged on that with um, some grant money from that. Could possibly. Yeah. But, uh, but looking at the scope of services in here, yeah. and given the, you know, the dollars I think that were mentioned this evening, we don't know. If what that would be. There's like no way I think that five thousand dollars is going to get us either one. Mm. So 
but the question is, you know, if we were going down this path, might we be able to use that grant money to defray the cost of this? And that would be great. Right. I set up the price proposals in such a way that it's a menu that, that uh, each task receives a price. So we can, if we can't afford the whole thing, we can afford part of it. We could supplement it with grant uh, money. Again, we don't know what the price is because we haven't opened those, and by law, those those have to re remain sealed until we've finished our evaluation of the technical proposals. Since there are only two and you're supposed to rank them, um, we can either do that quickly here or we can form a small group to do it in the next couple of days and uh, we can have the results ready for you at your next meeting. So do we want to rank them now or do we want to let someone else rank them? Well, you can only look. You rank them. You choose the oh, choose the top, top one, one. Then you right. look in that envelope. You don't mm -hmm. get to look in both envelopes at the same time. Right. I mean, I, I'm ready to rank them, but are we ready to rank? Or do we want to rank them? I, I need I a little more time to get through. Yeah. I didn't. I, I, I would have summarized them both, but I didn't really. I don't know. Really have to have the so would it be helpful to have? I'm sorry. How many how many requests went out? Uh, we sent out three direct and we advertised this in the central registry, which uh, is a statewide publication. Yeah, we got two responses. Only got two responses. And interestingly, our current provider wasn't a response. Wasn't one of the which I was a little bit surprised, honestly. Yeah. So. He might know what that number is that we're starting with. All yeah. right, so. Would it be helpful if me and one of the members of the select board members work on this? And uh, I don't think it's going to take very much time at all. I'm happy to if anybody. It's fine. Is that okay? It's all right. Mm -hmm. all right. Thank you. Before we finish that, yeah. I was kind of cu curious but that. If we got any questions, we'll just give you a call, Molly. And sure. Yeah, absolutely. I was kind of curious how Xana kind of already started doing a whole bunch of work. I mean, they actually put a lot into this one. Yes, they did, and uh, they talked to me about it, and I said that that wasn't exactly what we were looking for right now, that we were looking for responses to the RFP, which would highlight their qualifications, not pr produce a um, half, halfway done uh, five-year plan. Okay, so we will let Molly and uh, Mr. and Mr. Nixon do that. Anybody else you want? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Two okay. Totally So, did we make it yet? We're there. 7.35. We have a 7.35 appointment. They are not here, but we still need to have the appointment. No show. So. Are they not here for a reason? Yes. Sir, I, I, have an up, oh. I have a report. Okay. Okay. So, we did receive, uh, we did receive a uh, notice of intent uh, that a company uh, plans to locate a registered marijuana dispensary in the town of Hadley. Uh, and this is a formal notice that's required by law that, uh, let's see, required by law. I received a uh, telephone call from the attorney representing Hamden Health, uh, Hamden Care Facility Incorporated at, uh, from uh, 12 Center Street in Chicopee. Uh, the owner of the company is out of state right now and would like to meet with us on October 7th uh, to discuss uh, the, uh, the proposed location of this facility. As you know, uh, by ballot, uh, Massachusetts approved the siting of, of medical marijuana facilities in each county of the Commonwealth. Uh, this was overwhelmingly approved by the Commonwealth voters as well as Hadley voters. Uh, there is a minimum of three per county. One has been set up in Northampton and Florence, and apparently they're, they're looking to set up in Hadley and possibly Amherst as well. I talked to the town manager over in Amherst and he received an identical letter from the same company. Um, by law, we cannot deny this, but we can regulate it. We have zoning in place and the Board of Health promulgated re regulations to uh, 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 control and restrict 
uh, the sale of medical marijuana in the town of Hadley. Chief of Police worked very closely with the Board of Health in order to develop those regulations. Um, very briefly, those Board of Health regulations require uh, two kinds of permits, permits for the bricks and mortar facility, as well as a lot of restrictions as to the sales, hours of operation, security, uh, and other, inf uh, other activities that they have to perform. And each dispensing agent, each person who is registered with that dispensary also has to have a permit and be registered with the police department. So those are the features of the Board of Health regulations. Um, so I think given that we can't say no, we're in a good position to regulate and control the sale of medical marijuana in the town of Hadley. Uh, one of the things that the, uh, uh, Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Thomas Gallagher, who is the uh, president of Hamden Care Facility, is going to be looking for is a letter of support from the board so, or from the community. So mm -hmm. that'll be the bulk of his presentation on the tenth of on the seventh of October. I don't have a problem with coming in under any circumstances, but isn't that just the meeting right before our town meeting, or is it just after? It'll be uh, the, the the meeting where you have to uh, sign your warrant. I'm thinking that's going to be a pretty busy meeting. You think it's going to take that long? Wasn't it them? Yeah. I don't. It's not going to take that long. Okay. Can you give him a time limit? Uh, I can. He you wants give to give him. Do you want to speak at town meeting? No, no. He, no, he no, wants no. to speak at our board oh, meeting. Our board meeting. Just give him five or ten minutes. Okay. I, yeah. yeah. Just it has to be done. It's something that yeah. has to yeah, be done. Yeah, you just got to continue the, this hearing anyway, right? I don't well, agree with tonight, it anyway, but that's my own yeah, personal okay. choice. Tonight we just have to accept the letter and know that you're going to come at another date. That's all right. we have to do tonight. So if we want to take to officially accept the letter, we can or the notification, or we. I think that's all we really need to do tonight. To yeah, I'll make a motion to accept it. Is there a second, second to accept the letter? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then we'll... No. Um, oh, any no's? I don't know. So Did that's four that? to one. Yeah, I don't want to hear it. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> we're well, going to have them come on what date? I don't agree So with the 7th of October. So the 7th of October, for anybody who's listening and wants to come join for our... Uh, give their opinion yeah. or help. The, one of the past selectmen was pretty strong on this too at the time. Dan Goodkovitz. Yeah. For myself included. Okay, so that was our 735 appointment we had to do. So now we can, uh, why don't we step back and go over the special town meeting warrant. Um, do we have to actually close it tonight? You don't have to actually close it tonight. Uh, it would be helpful if you did because then it sort of fix, fixes the uh, warrant in place. All right, so let's just go over it real quick and then we'll... So Article 1 is our shortfalls from 2015. Right, $39,000 and change. This is the uh, shortfall that was not addressed at the end of the town. Uh, end of the fiscal year, so this has to be uh, uh, addressed in the funding plan is for free cash to address this. Okay. All right, article number, any questions about that? Mm -hmm. So article number two is our budget adjustments for FY16. So, so we, we talked about having the, uh, the special town meeting as the time to adjust any kind of salaries that might be adjusted. I think when I prepared this initially back in June, we were still hopeful that we would have our union contract settled. That, that seems less likely at this point. Um, but there are non-union salaries that need to be examined. In addition, our workers' comp was set at $50,000, and it came in at around sixty-five five. So we need to address that shortfall. We can transfer $9,600 from property insurance, which was uh, overfunded, and uh, raised the rest uh, uh, through free cash. And then we also deferred our OPEB funding from the annual town meeting to the special $245,000. This is an important mile marker that it is close or, or at the stop the bleeding point for our uh, OPEB liability. So if we can achieve this this target, 
um, that would be an important uh, uh, important uh, uh, target to achieve. What's the certified free cash? Certified, well, we haven't certified it, but we're estimating 780,000. So one of the things as a board we probably need to think about is we're just starting negotiations with DPW and police. We're in negotiations with uh, dispatch. Schools are still in negotiations. They've only settled one. So the question is, do we just put a placeholder number in here for COLAs so that we have a number to vote? Or just, there's a number. Um, a couple of the contracts may be saw, re resolved by the time we get a town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think two of them may not be. Um, so just for budgeting purposes, do you just choose a percentage to be the COLA and then figure up those numbers to put in here so we have a number we're, we're shooting at, knowing that and we may be high, we may be low. Hopefully we're really high. Um, but we put a number in and then let's say circumstances change. We have the opportunity to change the number. We have an opportunity to change at town meeting yeah. and then if we, res if we sell all our contracts, we have the opportunity to change then. And then we always have the opportunity at the uh, annual town meeting to make up our shortfall. Right. And theoretically, couldn't we reopen and couldn't we reopen the warrant and oh, yeah. close it again? Yes. Yes, you we may. And we could also reopen the warrant, change it, and close mm -hmm. it yep. again. Mm -hmm. I mean, shortfalls are on the annual and the special anyway all the time. So right. It really so the, doesn't matter. So the question is, what would we feel, if we feel comfortable with um, us using for the number to put in here for the COLA? Nothing right now. Uh, I would just Anything like to go with now? the shortfall, so you got an actual number that you're voting on. I think we should put in a number right now. Leave the placeholder, but not a number. Correct. So put all the step raises that we have, bigger step raises that weren't funded yet, put them in there and not worry about the coal? Not right now. Mr. Uh, the, the, the budget presentation that you asked of me for FY16 included a level-funded uh, mm -hmm. salary for each department, but then the impact of a 2% uh, uh, COLA and the uh, impact of a 2% plus step co uh, uh, for those for each department. So you might want to take a look at those numbers and decide what magnitude you're looking at for all the departments. Okay. Are those we, available? Yes, yes, you have you have a copy, and I'll I'll do a summary sheet as well. Okay. That was say if you if you could just take these line items that yep. are affected and just drop them in. Yep. That way, just what to make about, sure we don't transpose. What about just giving us a, a flat number and what the total cost would be? I can do it both ways. All right. So then we won't decide now. We'll decide next time we talk about the more. Yep. As long as we have right. time. Yeah. Well, actually, if we close the warrant today and we don't have the number here, we have to have a number here. We can my, look at My understanding of closing the warrant means that you're not accepting new articles, but you are free to amend, revise, update uh, any article that you have on the, on the warrant. I understand that, but usually you have something in there as being... Okay, we can do it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So... Any other questions about that one? So really all we're looking at to amend right now is just COLAs and STEPs. We're not, uh, we're not going to be asking to amend put anything else into this budget, right? Except for the workers' comp. And OPEP. And OPEP. And OPEP. And OPEP. Everything else is, oh, but uh, water debt and interest. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, water debt, uh, water debt and interest. But there's, there's nothing revised next to that, David? Do we let know? Me, let me find out what that number should be. Okay. So the other thing that we also talked about, the FY16, was cable, the cable budget. So we do have a little more money left over, and we said when we made the budget, if we did, we would think about putting, we took money out of mm -hmm. the cable, mm -hmm. cable, what do you call that one? Cable. CCAP. HPAT. Yeah, the stabilization uh, well, gift, account. Gift, account gift account to cover their wages. So that's the only other thing we need to think about. Mm -hmm. That was whether, sixteen thousand. Yep. That whether it? we want to take some money and, and fund that uh, general fund money and then put that money back into the gift account. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the other thing we have to think about. Okay. So we can also, if, if and when we reopen this, we can address that then? Or should we put a placeholder in there tonight? Well, we have it, and we, we can change the number. Yeah, so I'll, I'll add a, a line here and, and uh, provide you with a number. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else about that? No. All right, so the next article is uh, the PEG Access and Cable Fund. All right, so they changed, this is housekeeping. They changed the rules at the Department of Revenue. Um, there was a new law that was passed that uh, now uh, the Department of Revenue has made a ruling that the uh, cable grant money that uh, went to HPAT now needs to go to the general fund um, unless we adopt by June 30th, 2016, this new law that was passed which keeps it in the, in the HPAP uh, revolving fund as we did before. So uh, we don't know a lot about this new law. The, we've asked the Department of Revenue for an informational guideline uh, because of the number of retirees that they've, uh, retirements that they've had recently. They just don't have the staff to catch up with it. But if we can take this vote, this will be a housekeeping and will keep us uh, operating HPAT in the same way as we have uh, in the past. And that money won't be going to the general fund. Do you have a copy of that chapter and section of the law? Yes. Or is it online? Can I it's it online. Right. Any questions about that? No. <laughs> Article 4. Article 4 is to deal with the uh, reimbursement for the command vehicle. Right. Um, there's a lot more to that, but we all, did we actually get the answers to some of those questions? So um, you and I had a conversation about getting the uh, the contract from the uh, from the state for the uh, the sixty-eight thousand dollars that was put into the FY16 state budget for Hadley public safety purposes. Mike and I feel that we uh, we would like to somehow return the fifty thousand to the town because you all fronted money that the governor, the prior governor, cut from the budget in FY15. Uh, so, but there's no clean mechanism by which to do it. So we may have to withdraw Article 4 and approach this in a different way, such as using that FY16 state money in order to um, fund part of the public safety capital requirements, capital plan. So this is an attempt to restore the town for uh, the work that they did for on behalf of the fire department. There's no mechanism by which we can do this, so we may withdraw it and recast this as a capital article or have a capital expense come off of one of the capital articles and fund that through the state budget. Okay. All right. Article 6 is capital. Capital stabilization, $300,000 to be put into the capital stabilization account. Okay. And then Article 6 is actually spending the capital. So the capital. Spend it. Seven is capital enterprise for Route 9. This is the water line work. Right. And this number keeps on dropping. We had it at $425,000. Now it's um, uh, $377,000. And the most recent figures that we have were perhaps even lower. lower and the more. reason why the number lowers is because Mass DOT is changing the scope of the work for the Route 9 repaving, so that means less expense for us because they're doing more on their side. Uh, so we would borrow, and you have an application in for the right. state revolving fund at 2% yeah. over a 20-year period. We would borrow $336,000 for the water lines We'd have to take the engineering costs, which are not eligible for SRF funding, out of water reserves. And I have that down as impact fee in Article 7, which should be changed to reserves. I was thinking of the wrong enterprise fund. So okay. we'll continue to revise this uh, article as we get closer. Great. So Article 8 is giving money back for the Laurel Anna, Laurel Anna sewer right. line? We appropriated $275,000 uh, from sewer reserves in order to conduct the Lorana Lane project on, a, on an emergency basis. 
the project was bid at 244000 and tonight we're going to be asking you to lower that number by about 25000 So whatever we didn't need, we would like to return that to the sewer reserves. And we're going to be augmenting sewer reserves by $200,000 anyway. So that plus whatever we turn over will basically bring sewer reserves back up to where they were before we appropriated the money in the first place. Okay. Article 9 is the insurance authorization for Hopkins Academy, just this a housekeeping to move them back around. Right. So this is just a housekeeping article. We have the money in hand, so it's just an authorization. Okay. Article 10 is, is that that's the actual number of the damage that was done there? That was the actual number of the insurance check. There was a thousand dollar deductible. Okay. Article ten is acceptance of Laurel Drive. Yep. Article eleven is acceptance of Holly Drive. Um, so Park and Rec has Article twelve. They have a revolving fund which is set up by statute, Mass General Law, Chapter forty four, Section fifty three D, which has a ten thousand dollar cap. Uh, as of uh, July 1st, baked right into the law. That $10,000 is too constrictive. Uh, they're doing a lot of summer programming, and they find themselves having to schedule their programming around the fiscal year so they don't trigger um, in excess of 10000 So a cleaner way of doing this would be to rewrite their uh, revolving fund as a uh, as a general revolving fund under, under Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53 and one half, uh, just like we use for the other revolving funds, increase the cap from 10,000 to 20,000. This will be revenue neutral for us. Okay, and then Article 13, 14, and 15 are all part of the Zer Zer Turka Park. It's a Turka. And I was thinking we should make Article 14, number 13. That we should vote to decide to sell the property before we actually talk about setting up the trust fund. Because if we don't set up, if we don't vote to sell the property, there's no need for Article 13 or 15. So if we change those numbers. Okay. Um, as I started, I guess I'll finish explaining it. So the Park and Rec Commission wants to authorize the sell of Saturka Park. And then take that money, put it in the trust fund to be used for other rec, park and rec functions at a later time. So that's what those two articles are. Doesn't by law that have to be done anyways? No. Actually, by law, if you don't do this, you'd have to put it into the general fund and then reappropriate it back out. Right. To the park and rec. Okay. So this, I guess, just kind of make sure that money is set over there aside. So sure. Should the survey board. be done first? Well, if we decide not to sell it, we need to do a survey. Yeah, I think, I think we have a deed uh, property description for those two parcels, so I'm not sure that we need a survey. Why do we have to do that on town meeting floor? We authorize the funding for it. Yeah. There would be a two-thirds majority for it. Okay. Okay. So 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 building committee. are all for the building committee, and they are going to come before us with more information on all of them. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have any. I don't have any numbers here. Mm -hmm. So they're going to. We'll have to. They'll just come mm -hmm. before us. Same with CPA. Yep. 26 and 27, 28 are CPA reserved, and 29 and 30 are for the planning board. And we don't have any information on either, any of those as well. So I can just talk about the uh, CPA articles. I talked to Edwin Matusko today. The first one, number 26, would be money for a uh, sidewalk at the library in order to complete that uh, side entrance project. Uh, 27 would be money to, uh, to do preliminary work on that parcel that was identified in the uh, request for information by the Municipal Building Committee. Uh, and number 28 would be for uh, recreational fields for the school department. Uh, I talked really? to I talked to Mr. Matusko. They do they do not have a meeting 
uh, scheduled at this point. Yeah, school committee is supposed to address the CPA committee at some point here quickly. Okay. So how, general question, how is the school department going to resolve the issue of spending CPA funds that comes with a caveat it's open to the public on property that they close to the public during school hours? That will be part of the conversation. Because you can with CPA money. No. no. If it's used for the public, uh, yeah. off hours but it can't of school be restricted. department. But it's restricted, ac hours, so. it's restricted access. But that, that's one of the things that was being researched. Okay, that's what being, okay, yeah. sorry. That what looks was, to be What was the rest of 27 again, do you? I beg your pardon? Uh, no, 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 27. 27 was the uh, oh, okay. parcel of land. That was just for the RFI. So we'll get more information on those. Yeah. So, all right, so we need to a motion to close the warrant with these articles. So there, are, there are two mm -hmm. additional. Oh, I think that those, there's two requests for us to put on two other articles, and you talk to the town staff about that. Uh, not about the removal of the articles, just the genesis of the articles. I, I talked to town staff uh, uh, today about this, and I think if Article 2 is going to be addressed, uh, then these articles could be baked into that, and that, that would be part of that uh, uh, general to Article 2. Everyone knows what the other two articles are? Yeah. No. They're in the back after you at the end of the uh, official law. So do we want to make them articles in special town meeting or let take care of them as we would any other request? Well, do we want to take care of them as any other adjustment to the FY16 budget in that article? I, yeah, except the first article is a COLA related, mm -hmm. okay, which can easily be handled by the article the way it's written right now, David, right? Mm -hmm. It would seem that the second article, which relates to um, a, a benefit that does not currently exist. Right, this would be more problematic. That would be more problematic. Not really. What? Well, we, if we make the decision to include that benefit, that would be taken care of. Um, but, So that would just go into the same line item? Yeah, it would be an adjustment to the budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do it. Okay, so we just blend the two of them together. Doing it. Mm -hmm. But it does, require, it does require another action by the select board. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, sorry, what were you saying is by way of update regarding the second article? That could be also included into the FY, into the uh, Article two. So, in any in any way that uh, uh, a department, I'm pointing at you, and you don't have this in your, your department budget, but any department that has you do, uh, all right, yeah, any department that has a longevity bonus that is built into the salary line items for that department. So we would just put those numbers in there. Yeah. If that's the, if that's the pleasure of the board. Right. I think maybe a conversation with the, the people who submitted the article would be helpful. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to vote to put it into without having, because again, we can open it, we can choose to open it right, and right. add this as a separate article, or we can just take care of it. Or you can combine it. And, and yeah, given the number of articles that we have, any, any opportunity to combine mm -hmm. and articles. And I think articles that very shortly, we're going to run into a place where if we don't have the information, we're going to have to defer until the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. So okay. do we wish to close with the articles we have? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? So we're closing the town meeting warrant with only 20... 30. 30 articles. 30 articles. Including the two. No. Okay. 30 articles. 30 articles. Mm -hmm. 30 articles as presented. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Results of the IFP for the town hall doors. We uh, went out to bid for the town hall doors and windows. We received two bids. One bid exceeds the budget of $23,100. That bid was $24,000. The bid that uh, did meet the, uh, the price is from an outfit called Northeast Systems, is that it? Bridget, what's the name uh, of the company? New System Associates. New, Sy New Systems Associates, and they, uh, their bid was $17,998.90. So they're the low bidder. I will make a recommendation to uh, award the bid to them. So moved. Second. Second. This is the company that's that's done some doors for us already at the library. I don't we recognize the name. Before, okay. They did say they've done work for the town before when they came. Okay. Excellent. Okay, um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, on call consultant recommendation. Actually, the fire chief stuff. Let's skip to number five, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission Sustainability Toolkit. Uh, Pioneer Valley uh, Planning Commission put together a uh, sustainability toolkit for cities and towns. Uh, Select Board uh, Conservation Commission Planning Commission received a copy of it on a flash drive. Uh, it uh, covers a very broad range of sustainability issues, everything having to do with smart growth, transportation, uh, economic development, food security, uh, and other uh, major planning efforts. Uh, too, too voluminous to discuss right here, but given that we're updating our master plan right now, this comes at a very good time for us to take a look at it contains many, uh, um, many, many pages of discussion about the importance of each of these topics, as well as uh, model bylaws and guidelines for managing everything from food banks to uh, smart growth to mixed residential development. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's something that the planning board can really use. Be happy to share it with the, the board if you want to take it home, take a look at it see if there's things that you want to do as you consider the strategic plan for the next five years for the town of Hadley. Is there a timing issue on this with us? No. I, I would say that we would forward this information to the Planning Board and Conservation Commission uh, for recommendation to them from them as to whether or not they feel it would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They work continually with the Pioneer Valley Planning I, I, Commission. I agree. Okay. So let's back up number four. So from the Municipal Building Commission Committee, um, they talked to our um, on-call consultant, and they've worked out a couple of scopes of work for two properties. One is for the Russell School to do some work, and then one is to do some, if we were to do a new fire substation work. So we have scopes of work here. They recommend that we accept them. Well, they said if, if you like the scope of work, then they'll uh, put together a pricing proposal. Uh, so, Absolutely. I think it's going to be helpful for those articles at special town meeting that they have planned there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, I'd like to see some numbers. Have you seen the scope of work for the substation? From the engineer or architect? From the architect. No. Okay. Yeah. We'll get that to you then. Okay. So I would move that we accept the one for Russell School and have them proceed with getting the cost. So we know. And then I would say the second part of that motion would be that we accept the scope of the substation contingent upon any changes that the fire chief wishes to put in. Mm -hmm. So I move. Second. Second. How, has the building committee been in contact with you and, and the on call engineer? Not the on-call engineer. I mean, there's been discussions for a while in regards to it, but All right. I haven't seen what it's like, so. Okay. Before we go to the next article, I'm wait, sorry. Wait. Go ahead. Any other questions about this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I'll stop that part. Um, 
just before we go on to the next one, I just want to go back to the, the board, um, not to reopen it or anything, but I think um, given the fact that there were petitioned articles, and I'm completely comfortable that they're covered under the scope of what we already have, but having said that, the petitioners may not feel that way, so I think it would be appropriate for us to invite them in if, if they so choose for discussion. Well, uh, yeah. And then we can always open open the warrant, you know, reopen it and add it in if that discussion. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think maybe we should just set the time for us to talk to them. I'll talk to them and see and make sure they understand what we're doing. And if they still wish to come talk to the whole board, then we'll let them have well, an opportunity. Yes, because it, town meeting is not a place where you would go or is a proper way to. Um, go about funding these salaries is the downtown meeting floor uh, without us first having discussion on it with them. I think they should be invited in. I think um, I'd like to do that. I think we should. I mean, otherwise we're going to have mayhem at the at town meeting with everybody We should wanting. give them a chance to have a talk Absolutely. with us before they, if they decide that they've ta we've taken care of it in the articles and they don't need to talk to us or talk to town meeting, I think that's their prerogative as well. But that's what I'm saying. I think we should invite them in. I will, yeah, yeah, I'll talk to and them then, first and then see what they want to do and then we'll go from there. Right. That's and what to I was the extent to they want to come, then we need to make time for that. Uh, okay. What? I did. Sorry about that. I was thinking. <laughs> Sorry, my brain was just working slowly there. It took me a, an article or two to catch up. Yeah. All right. Laura Anna Drive. We have a change order. And this is actually the final change order and will result in the final pay request soon. Correct. It's a balancing change orders and they are required on any project when the adjustment is needed to end the project to the balance, the overruns and underruns on each line item. Ex example as as built quantities with the unit prices. The balancing change order does nothing other than document the resultant cost of the project as completed and the value calculated is used in the final payment in the project to bring the remaining cost down to zero. The remaining balance is going to be $3,000 for the as-built plans, correct David? Because we do not have those. And the total value of this change order is $25,442.65. Well, that's a credit. Yes. And this has uh, been reviewed by Charlie Tripp, the project engineer from Time Bond. So we have 23 in our book. So it's 25242 right, It was, was 23000 when I put together this information last week. Right. And under subsequent review and We've been able to increase the, the value of the credits right. by about uh, fourteen hundred dollars. So it's, it's a credit of twenty-five thousand four hundred and forty-two dollars and sixty-five cents. Right. So if we wait another two weeks, it might get better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the next item out of order. Our last item was the goals and objectives, but we had an item come up which was it, which was unexpected. Um, too bad. No, it's not too bad. <laughs> yes, there is. So, but. Yeah. Mr. Komaski, the acting DP. You, you don't want names addressed this evening, do you? Yes. If we're going to be hiring these people, yes. If these people haven't given notices to their current jobs, they know this? They know this, yes. Both of them. Both, they both. Okay. So, Mr. Komaski <laughs> has some recommendations to fill the water vacancies. And this is and this is something we would normally put on the agenda at a regular time timed schedule, but we do have an uh, issue with manning and changing our manning with DEP. So this Correct. is kind of something we need to resolve as soon as we can. So just like to thank the board for such a very short notice on this. I mean, we've been struggling with this since May. There's been a shortage in the water division, as we all know, with two vacancies. 
and we interviewed and tried to come up with people that would be qualified. We had two, they backed out, they went back to their other jobs. We re-advertised for another position. We didn't get any for a while, and then all of a sudden, we had one come in, come in and apply for the position as the primary treatment operator, which is our biggest cost right now with small waters, which is costing us an arm and a leg, let's say, to keep them there as the full-time operator of the treatment plant. So we interviewed him. I took him over to the plant. I spoke with him on the side. I asked him many questions. I checked his references. We did the Corey check on this person already to make sure that everything was on the okay with him, which everything was. There was no problem with the Corey check on him. So <clears throat> seeing that he has to give a notice, which he is going to be doing, there's still going to be a time lag on this of at least two weeks. Also, of course, we're taking into consideration the training period that's going to be required of this person to pick up and get going and to take over this water treatment plant because as the board knows, you know, small waters is just, we have to have them no matter what. But once we get this person on board, small waters can start sliding back and sliding down once he gets trained and DEP is, you know, going to be all set with what we have. We also have another candidate that we want for the third position because, of course, we have two vacancies. Interviewed him. He interviewed very well, checked his references, did the Corey check. Everything came back positive on this person also. So with the board's permission, I have the pay rates figured out what they would fit into within the range that we have to pay for this person. It's not at the top, it's not at the bottom. They're kind of more or less in the middle on both of these positions. So <clears throat> their big rush on this is it's still going to take time to do. They have to do a pre-employment physical and drug test. They have to give notice. It's still going to be a while before these people actually show up and we're trying to get this done as soon as we can to cut the cost for the water division because, as we know, the water reserves aren't as great as they used to be. So I'm recommending that these two individuals be hired on a six-month probationary period and to get them up and going to get this water division back to where it should be because right now there's only one person in there, as you know, and. He's running pretty ragged. I mean, the highway division's been helping him as much as they can. We've been running into problems because we've got highway problems that got to get done, and it's just causing a complete mix-up on trying to get things done on who's doing what and when they're doing it. If you have the division, you have the people there, they can do the, the jobs. Right now, you're taking highway guys, unexperienced, trying to go mark for water lines or trying to inspect water lines. I mean, they're not qualified to do that. So the quicker we can get this accomplished, I believe it's going to work out for the best of the town of Adam. So they know they're going to be there. This is a public record you gave yes. us. They know this is going to be right. Okay. Yes. So the recommendation is the higher, um, what's his name? Anthony Horton? Yes. As the primary water treatment primary operator? Primary water treatment operator, yes. He has a grade three distribution license yes. and a grade four in training Yes. treatment license right and the next one is, is William, William Kelly. Kelly and he has a grade one distribution license right. so if there's any questions comments I got a couple that were asked to me well, if we're on under such budget restraints why are we starting these people in these steps not at the bottom but practically near the top well, it's not really a When top. me and you started, Mike, we started at $4.50 an hour, and as we learned and as okay. we got our licenses, we ran up the ladder. <laughs> so this is compa compatible with our salaries now? Correct. Okay. Exactly. Any other questions, John? The only question I have is... Uh, I think in hiring people that it should be with at the pay scale of their experience. That's um, what we're doing with these. Well, is it experience? Well, on the first person the it first is. Person, we're, yes. we're taking consideration of the second person. He also has a 
distribution. He just got it, but consideration taking, he also has a CDL license. He also has a hydraulics license. That third position is required to plow snow. So we took all of that into consideration when we, when we did this. Okay. Thank you. I don't think everybody knew no, that. No. Thank Any you. Any other mm -hmm. questions? You interviewed 17 people for the positions, correct? Yes. Well, there says nine here, but I did a lot more on my own. And we tried to come up with the best candidates, and we've been struggling with this. As you know, in the newspaper recently, there were some articles about other departments having problems mm -hmm. with their water people that work there. So I feel that this would be a good chance. I mean, they're going to be on probation, just like anybody else when they start here. So a good opportunity to get someone started. I'll make a motion to accept these two positions um, recommended by the committees and um, our acting director. Second. Any more discussion? No more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Oops, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now we're into our last item is goals and objectives for the fire chief and town administrator. So you guys want to wrestle so who goes first? I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> so I've presented, I've prepared and presented to you uh, the uh, goals proposed goals and objectives for FY16 um, and uh, at the end of this discussion I imagine you'll want to take this under advisement and review it and probably have commentary at your next meeting. Um, so the, the first one is the strategic plan, the five-year strategic plan which was identified by the Department of Revenue as a top priority for the select board uh, and the select board has taken concrete steps towards developing uh, the, the, the planning platform for that strategic plan. Uh, I won't go into the, uh, into the items that you've uh, performed at this point, but I will make it my priority to assist the select board to implement the findings uh, regarding the SWOT analyses uh, that, and assist in the development of a five-year strategic plan as well as uh, implementing the new calendar for the FY2017 budget that includes a more inclusive and holistic approach to uh, uh, municipal services. Second is uh, to continue working on the action plan, continuing working with the treasurer, collector, accountant, and the assessor to implement the recommendations identified in the Department of Revenue F Financial Management Report, as well as the auditors FY13 and FY14 now recommendations. And uh, progress towards uh, implementing these is ongoing. Uh, many of these issues for the FY14 uh, recommendations prepared by the auditors have been resolved, so we're still working on the older documents. Financial reporting, uh, be working with the select board in order to uh, continue not only reporting the revenues, expenditures, capital accounts, and other information using VADAR and other uh, formats, but also working with the, uh, the, the select board in order to determine what is the utility and uh, usefulness of uh, the information that we're providing for you so that you're, you're getting the information and the sufficient detail that you needed in order to uh, make decisions about the town. Uh, the visual budget project is underway. The accountant has provided historical data for the vendor, uh, and uh, FY16 data is being provided to the vendor as it becomes available. So we're very close to implementing that in fall 2015. So we hope to have uh, that up and going very shortly. Uh, and then the accountant and I will be visiting VADAR headquarters to receive training in order to utilize the features of the accounting software more effectively and again bringing that back. And then finally finishing up the personnel policies and wage study uh, through the, uh, the our insurance provider we received a grant, risk management grant to update the personnel policies and job descriptions. That project is 
basically complete and we'll be presenting that shortly. We're currently exploring a grant funding for a human resources audit uh, in collaboration with the school department. This project, if the funding is secured, will provide a report on our current human resources practices and procedures. So above and beyond just policies and job descriptions, it will review such things as how we handle FMLA, Fair, uh, Fair Labor Standards Act, uh, and other processes, workers' comp, the, the whole shebang will go over all of our processes that we do. Uh, and then we will be working with the University of Massachusetts. I've already had a conversation with Tony Morales in order to uh, complete the wage study. So that, in a nutshell, are my goals for FY16. Okay, so we have, um, we, don't, we as the board, we need to look them over if we want to make some changes, add some things, we need to um, probably do that by the 16th. So if you have anything you want to add, let me know. Just email it to me and then put it in and go from here. Um, Can I suggest, Gilford, I think one of the things that we did last time, um, after we got the initial um, offering to, uh, of goals from the individual was to make sure that um, the goals are written in such a way that they're very clearly measurable with you know established dates and the like um, right so I think when we're looking at that people should have that in mind so that there's extreme clarity to avoid any you know back and forth and misinterpretation and all of that so in yeah. fairness to you yeah. Yeah. and variables I mean there are sometimes yeah yeah, absolutely. So nothing has ever said it's done. Okay. Any other questions? Any more? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So. Before can, we, um, go ahead. can I ask to potential uh, that for David's consideration to add one? Sure. <laughs> Are you ready? You're poised and ready. Well, I'm ready now. <laughs> um, your office. Well, it's so much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> it's better. You can, you can actually walk into it now. It is better. Uh, yes. But it's just such a wonderful opportunity right now before you with the, um, with the painting of Town Hall and the removal of several boxes and the Make America beautiful. Yeah. Got it. But we talked about... Um, at which meeting I was in, but we talked about putting a lot, I think it was you, Bridget, we talked about putting a lot of things on um, thumb drives so that we wouldn't have to have all the um, paper piled up in there and just transfer it onto something other than having all the storage. boxes, and then we could get rid of all that. Yeah. But maybe some of that could just be put on thumb drives and put away. It's, it certainly would be a lot easier to store than You'll, you'll see in the capital plan that there's a request to do that through the building department, but it could do for all the town hall. This is one of the things I identified in my uh, SWOT analysis as a weakness, is our whole record-keeping system could be uh, uh, brought up to modern standards, mm -hmm. that's for sure. And that should be part of the IT. Yeah. Yeah, a big part of it, actually. Yeah. 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 That would be good. The biggest modern standard is using recycling bins that are plastic versus cardboard boxes that fall apart. Got it. That's what my office is full of right now. Boxes. Boxes. Yeah, we're trying to work, reorient ourselves. So your office like his office? No, my whole, it's not beyond my office. It's outside everywhere. Mm -hmm. All right. It's hard to reorganize your workspace. Mm -hmm. I did put draft on here just so you know that this is a work in progress, so your review will be appreciated. Uh, I've taken in, I've really listened to that folks. I, this was the first opportunity that I had done goals and objectives as a new chief. So I learned a lot from that first round, and um, 
you'll see how I broke this down. So there's there's some items that are going to be a lot of work, and then there are some items that are more follow up and not as much, but I think that are still important to keep in my goals and objectives. <coughs> so you can read how I broke it down. So daily operations of the Hadley Fire Department are a priority for me. So as you know, as we talked about in the SWOT analysis, is that uh, you know concerns about staffing, uh, not enough folks during the day on the call force. So these tasks keep building up and building up, and there's not enough of us. So we've kind of, uh, our department has outgrown our staffing. So my first goal and objective is to make sure that the daily operations are continued and that we're not going to be uh, going back on our outreach and our ability to go out and do uh, good inspections and working with the building department and everyone else. So that's my first one. I, put, I did put in dates of implementation and, and uh, dates of a review and update for you. Um, so our, that started, that has been ongoing, but it's in place already. Second one is focus on completion of projects. Having spoken with a colleague of mine, uh, I'm going in an effort to try and uh, streamline and focus on stuff. There's uh, there's a management tool called Kanban tool. I don't know if any of you know of it, but it takes all your tasks and then you can uh, you can actually put it into columns where you have you actually give yourself one item that you have to get done a day and you can see the breakdown of what you need to do. So for me, I think that's critical because when you have when you have piles, because if you went over and saw my office, you'd probably make that one of my goals to clean it up. <laughs> uh, you kind of shuffle paper back and forth. So you start a project, then you see another piece of paper with another project. So I think this is going to uh, provide me with that opportunity to start cleaning up some of these outstanding projects. So that's uh, it's a moderate, but it's very doable, and you can see the date of implementation is it's already started, and we'll, I'm requesting that we review it again uh, at the beginning of the year. The monthly reports, this is uh, low priority. However, it's something that I, I would really appreciate it if you would review and make sure that it is the type of information that you're looking for. We put together the Google Calendar uh, for you to review whenever you want, so you can actually keep track of what we're doing for inspections, uh, for meetings, for maintenance on vehicles, for time off, everything. So at any point, and if anybody needs that process of how to get on there, I can get, get it to you right away. But you can go on that anytime <coughs> and click on the inspection. It will tell you what the inspection is. And then if there's a description attached to it of what we're doing, you can read what that is. So you'll be well aware this is the month of August. So you can see all the check marks of what we're getting done. Um, so that is in place. What I am requesting is that there was a request for a monthly report. So the monthly report, I think, is covered very well in this Google Calendar, and then also the monthly run reports that you'll be getting, because it includes all the, obviously, all the emergencies that we're going to, but also the trainings and everything else that we're doing. And uh, that'll be, that's coming up on another one of our, uh, we're gonna make sure that you get that information timely because it's, it's been difficult to enter all this information, but I think we've, we've now figured out a way to do it where it's, it's not as much of a burden and taking such a long time. So uh, I'm just requesting that you review that if you wouldn't mind and see if there's anything additional that you need and you know we'll, we'll certainly be willing to change that however you want. But that is in process, so that was my last year's goal that in my opinion is complete, but let me, let me know if you want any changes. Uh, the training program for Lieutenant McKenna, he completed the uh, goal and objective that we had for last year. There was a specific list of inspections that we mandated that he get through, and I'd be confident with him signing off on as uh, he is my designee. So I, make, I wanted to make sure that he had a very good understanding of what he was inspecting. He has completed the Fire Inspector 1 program, which is required now by the state to do inspections and I'm confident in those ones that he completed last year. So we're moving forward to a new new addition, like what he's gonna be, his goals are gonna be for this year. And that's working with me again uh, on the next phase of training. So that's site plan review for the planning board for new commercial residential properties. That's review of fire protection systems. At this point, we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be working with him 
strictly on residential properties because commercial properties are quite a bear. And that's something that I'm not ready to have him take on at this point because it's going to take him a while with the list that we have here. Fire Inspector 2 training is coming up through the state, which will also be mandated. The program has just not been completed yet, and there are continuing edu education requirements, just like you have with the water, water department everywhere. So he's going to be focusing on that training. And also, one of his other uh, requirements for this year will be the student awareness program so that he'll be able to assist me with getting out into the schools and continuing that great program that we have with educating kids on fire and life safety, as well as the seniors for the town of Hadley, uh, where we're edu educating them as well and offering them uh, programs such as changing out their batteries for them, making sure that they have working smoke detectors, and working with the council on aging. Again, we're, we have a new program coming out with lock boxes that we're working in coordination with council on aging and triad. Uh, to offer up lock boxes to seniors. Uh, we've, we've put money in from the police and fire associations. Council on Aging has also supported it. So we have boxes that we're waiting, we're waiting to start handing out to seniors. And as part of that, we will be, uh, we'll be conducting home inspections to make sure that they're as safe as possible. <clears throat> so that's basically going to be running through this full year for him to be going through all that training. Uh, Priority for me is completion of the draft of the Fire and Dispatch Center standard operating procedures. They are definitely in process. However, because of uh, training considerations in order to implement this, with the contract being signed with the dispatchers, and then also just being able to put together the dispatch protocols, they are very closely interconnect between police and fire. So that is my priority uh, with that final draft expected by November 1st of this year. Uh, a new goal for me this year, which uh, is moderate to a priority, is evaluation, update, and training exercise of Town of Hadley uh, Community Emergency Management Plan. It's our SEMP plan. And so as the Emergency Management Director for the town, annually I review and update our community SEMP plan. Uh, and that's in coordination with Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. Uh, so this year, I need to get into it a little bit deeper and go more into depth into the base plan. And then we have a number of uh, annex, annexes that we need to attach, including uh, it's an unfinished product at this point because our, our, uh, our coup plan, continuity of operations plan that we use to move the town hall over to the public safety building. We're putting together the lessons learned and we're supposed to be doing an after action report with the folks that came over there and see what went good, what went bad, what we need to improve on. And that will be attached to our, our SEMP plan as well as our public safety. Mike, uh, the uh, police chief and myself are working on a coup plan for the police department as well. And that's in process. We're also working very closely with the Hadley Public Schools. And all of this was discussed today at our department head meeting. So all these, all these plans need to be incorporated into our into our SEMP plan so that they're in one, one central location for review and, and update. Um, so that's what we have for a new one. And then the final one is another one that was moved forward. Uh, it's the review of staffing levels and potential fire-based ambulance service. So this is the in-depth study that we're looking for. So a review of the MRI report it was that we've done uh, the six-year ambulance study that we've, we, we've already conducted. So just updating that information and making sure you have the most accurate and most current information on the number of calls, the types of calls, uh, the response time, the change of response time that may, may occur, and then also what that, what that impact might be on our staffing if we were to go with a fire-based ambulance service. And on top of that, what kind of support would we be getting for for uh, grant funding from uh, the federal federal government and state. Um, so that is a priority and Joyce and I will be working on that and potentially bringing back the, uh, the ambulance study committee again if they're willing. So those are, those are my <laughs> goals and objectives for, for this year and I look forward to your review and comments. I think the fourth time's a charm. This is it. <laughs> for me. I think you should be the last one so it's uh, there's no specific order here. It's the dates are on here for you, so there's no specific order. Are there any questions?
Are th is there nobody else that's a volunteer that's currently there that's available to help you with the inspections? I mean, the inspections always used to be done by... In the past, all the officers took part in, in minimal amount of inspections as part of their officer... Responsibility. Responsibility. Correct. That's changed now because of the certification requirements, the increase in training that's required to do it. But um, not all inspections. Certainly they could do, they certainly can step up to do it, but again, we're talking about a call force that works full time and it's, it's tough just to get folks to come to calls, never mind asking them to come after hours. There's other, another problem with having to go out and do the inspections at late afternoon, evening when folks are coming home. So certainly we do, when we have the opportunity, we, we do offer it up, but um, like I said, with everything else we're asking them to do, it's, it's difficult. But certainly something that we can, we can certainly look into. This is outside it's, entities you can hire to do those for you as well, right? Uh, I'm sure at a cost you absolutely can, but I don't know if you're going to be recouping the cost of the inspection for that. So, and I'm not really sure what agency, I would have to look into the, what agencies provide that. I, I'm not really sure of that. So when you go through your analysis of the staffing, what was you going to look at this and that's going to be part of what you look at as inspections, right? Because it's occupying a lot of time. It, it always did Correct. occupy yes. a lot of time. I mean, back when I was an officer in a department, there was six or eight of us doing inspections, you know, to, to, to their knowledge. You know, the chief handled the harder stuff and passed the smoke detector inspection down to, to the younger guy, you know. Um, I, I had one question about the uh, report. Which are the call reports, just like the police call reports mm -hmm. that they give us every week, why can't dispatch just send the fire report along with the police report? Because it doesn't, their IMC isn't, it's not, it's not. Okay, they're two separate systems. It's two separate okay. systems. Yeah, yeah that's, so, that's what I'm asking. Uh, we're, we're very close, I can tell you, with that new system that we have of linking IMC to our station smarts. Supposedly it's happening sometime in the fall. Because okay. they're trying to do that. All the new equipment's sure. capable of handling it, though. Yeah, it's okay. just they're still designing that software to make that connection between theirs and ours because they're, okay. they're not very robust on the fire side. Okay, so we have the chief's draft <laughs> and we make the same comments. And if we want to add something, send it to me and we'll go from there. Um, one thing we haven't done is talk to the police chief about getting him started in our next little program there. Right, actually he has started, uh, uh, if you remember, the, the contract that you set up uh, said that you wanted the chief of police to uh, report his goals and objectives to me. Happy to share that with the select board. I've asked him to prepare it. He's given me a draft. Uh, so happy to share that information. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I see that sometime. Of course. Okay. So, we... Uh, it's not nine o'clock yet, so we can't adjourn. <laughs> I was told that we couldn't adjourn. You are so cruel to me. So, uh, I, have a, I only have one announcement. I got a comment from a resident in town that was very pleased with the DPW and their mowing. They said it was a great job, and they also had called the office to talk about mowing, and the person who answered the phone was very receptive and understood their concerns and was very, very good. So, Thank congratulations. Thank you. Pass that on. Any other announcements? I have We'll start at the end and work this okay. one. Um, the Legion is having a chicken to go uh, dinner, I guess, no, chicken, well, it's chicken, chicken to go. go. <laughs> <laughs> On Sunday, September 13th, tickets are $10. I know for a fact, based on uh, a direct encounter, that John Kirish is selling tickets. Um, and I'm sure there are other ind individuals associated with the Legion who are selling them as well. Uh, but always uh, promises to be an excellent meal. I believe they're doing two, uh, two different times on Sunday, September 13th. So, if you're interested. Okay. Love chicken to go. Mm -hmm. Did it for years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ready? Go. Okay. So, we'd like to send our condolences to um, dispatcher uh, Dan Tebow. His um, mother had passed away unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. um, so, our condolences to him. Uh, to the family of Dorothy Urch. Um, she was a longtime 
reading teacher in our elementary school. She passed away also. And to the family of um, Al Coolis, and he was a, he didn't live here in town um, the last several years. He lived in New Hampshire. And I guess he was quite a uh, radio commentator in New Hampshire. I can picture Al doing that because I knew him. Uh, he was on the Historical Commission here, and he also um, was very big in being a scoutmaster here in town. And there are a lot of um, older men now that uh, actually had Al for a scoutmaster. So there you go. <laughs> older man, older there we go. <laughs> uh, and he did a great job with the kids, so our condolences to his yeah, family. He was a really good guy. Any others? Three county fairs this weekend, and as a director, I would be remiss if I didn't bring that up. <laughs> So Come out and join us. The guy that's in the booth taking your ticket money will be me. So is there a Hadley <laughs> day there? Every day's a Hadley <laughs> day there. Okay, just checking. Yes. John, is your, do you have any? Uh, okay. Anything else? Mike, you got something? No. George for Carol. Oh, okay. okay. That was it. Close. All right, so our next meeting is going to be the... Ninth. Ninth. Next week. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. All right. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.